them, but also um, have an idea of what uh, our history is and be able to learn from that for the future. So that's why we're going through this, and I like history. So um, the Ladies Dorcas Society in the 75th anniversary put together a cookbook. And when they did that cookbook, some very far-sighted ladies did a history of the church. So I'm going to review some of that history for each of the decades that was in that cookbook and give you an idea of, of what's happened over the last 90 years. Um, and as Pastor said, it was in the 19, early 1930s during the Depression that uh, the church was first formed. So we have 1930 decade. Pastor Hennig was a missionary who surveyed the Milford area. When he surveyed, he found 24 Lutheran families, 87 unchurched families, 93 children not attending Sunday school. He decided to have the first service in June of 2000, or sorry, of 1931, and there were 28 attending, 11 in the Sunday school, and that was in the Fireman's Hall. Um, successor was uh, Reverend Herbert Dick, who was the first pastor of the dual parish with Watsika. So we were at one time connected to the Watsika congregation, and he served until 1935. Continuing on in the 30s, services moved in the fall to the Milford Herald Building in 1931, and uh, the Constitution was adopted uh, today, February 6, 1932, in the La Haute Building in Milford with 60 baptized members. Communion will be served on the third Sundays of February, June, August, October, plus Christmas and Easter. The budget for 1933, Dean, was $240. Oh. <laughs> 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 the oldest organization was the Dorcas Society, which was organized in 1933. The Joint Reformation Service, which was held in 1933, was held at the high school, and the, do the uh, uh, donations at that service were given for, and this is in quotes, erecting a church edifice for the Lutheran congregation in Milford. The church service commemorated the 450th anniversary of the birth of Martin Luther and had an estimated 1,500 attendees at the Milford High School. So we celebrated that 450th anniversary at the high school, and all of the money from the uh, donations that day went to help build this church. In 1935, Pastor Dick left, leaving a membership of 100 baptized, 47 communicants, and, and an enrollment of 35 in the Sunday School. Reverend Franny in April 7th was installed as a joint pastor for White Watsika in Milford. And the purchases that year were three dozen folding chairs at a cost of $15 a dozen. Also, they purchased a mimeograph machine that year. In 1936 youth group, they started a youth group in the congregation. So you will have a celebration coming up soon also. 1937, they received, this congregation received an altar a pulpit, a baptismal font, and hymn boards from the Dwight congregation. And I'm guessing that it's these pieces right here, the white pieces. I'm not sure about that, but I'm guessing that. The congregation purchased the Adair property on West Jones Street for $775. So this property was known as the Adair. In 1938, the building plans were accepted for, and again in quotes, a provincial church of the late Gothic period in Norman, England. The four windows on the west side of the nave represent the major prophets, four major prophets. The four windows on the east represent the four evangelists. And the carved wood shield, IHC, represents, or means Jesus our Savior. And that was placed at the front, and you'll, I think it's still there, that's uh, up above the entrance to the church. The cost of the church was $11,500, and when you added the furnishings, it came up to $13,000. So all of that was done in the 1930s. Now we can flip it over to 1940s. The third pastor was Reverend William Tim. Purchased new hymn books and Sunday school chairs, two brass candlesticks from the Lutheran Church six miles east of Mattoon. So there was a lot of, of, of uh, worship or a lot of um, giving happening throughout Illinois. 
Hmm. Bell was purchased from Woodland with the stipulation that it would be rung one hour before worship, at the beginning of Sunday school, and at the beginning of the church service. In 1942, it was voted to celebrate Holy Communion uh, 11 times, and the acceptance of the new Lutheran liturgy, and they approved white gowns for confirmation. In 1945, the congregation voted to become self-supporting. They were no longer a part of Watsika. Purchased a parsonage at 507 Irving for $4,000. And Reverend Meyer insta was installed, serving until his death in 1959. 1950. A new organ was purchased finished paying off the purchase debt of the first parsonage, which again was $4,000. In 1955, the congregation voted to purchase land to the east of the church for $2,750 to build a new parsonage. In 1956, a young couples club formed with 19 couples, and they continued on to meet until 1980s. So even when they weren't quite so young, they still had their couples club. 1957, the first BBS took place with 57 children attending. In 1958, the parsonage was completed for $25,000. 1960, Reverend Charles Knopf was the fifth pastor. Uh, there was two worship services were started. In 1964, the congregation approved the expansion of enclosing the front entrance Adding to the sanctuary and basement, installation of new heating he system with ductwork to accommodate future air conditioning. So we had some really good thinkers there. 1965, the bids that were accepted, which doubled the size of the church for $65,000. In, in 1966, there was a new organ purchase, chimes, an altar, pulpit, and lectern, and all was rededicated in April of 1966. The mortgage was liquidated in 11 years, in 1977. <coughs> so the $65,000 was paid off at 11 years later, six years ahead of schedule. In 1967, they, we formed a dual parish with Good Shepherd in Hoopston. In 1968, Pastor Jordy was installed. And these actions took place in the 1960s, we, it was decided to usher out at the end of the service. It was decided to accept a card system for communion registration. To allow the Dorcas to install an outdoor bulletin board. Approve the use of individual communion cups on an alternating basis. Paid off the parsonage debt of $25,000. And clergy chairs beside the altar were purchased with a memorial gift. In the 1970s, Girls, you can put yours down just to be dramatic here. <laughs> 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 that era. Reverend John Rapp served one year, and Reverend Robert Heckey was installed in 1973. Purchased the needed updates, a storage shed was behind the parsonage garage, mailboxes in the narthex, new hymnals, offering plates, and room dividers for the Sunday school area. Microphone system, cassette recorders, al uh, an altar candelabra, and the piano were purchased. <laughs> Counseling room furniture, carpeting, kneeling bench, and another mimeograph machine. Communion was held twice monthly. Publication of the church directory for the first time. Approved the use of basement for migrant council. 1976, approved a new constitution. 1977, Pastor Schwitzenberg became the pastor. In 1978, completed the air conditioning. Elders began to assist with communion. The first woman was accepted as a voting member. Voting age for members changed from 21 to 18. Monthly newsletter began. Support of a Ghana mission project. The altar guild was formed in 1978. And in the late 70s, extensive electrical re rewiring of church property, purchase of wedding candelabra, new pyramids, investments, a private communion set, and a new stove. 1980s. The basement was repainted. There was new flooring in the parsonage kitchen and dining area, and there was a new church refrigerator. In 1982, voted to allow the women to serve on the Board of Education. 
voted to establish a parking lot behind the church. This parking lot costs $4,500 with the intent of having a north exit. In 1983, Reverend Bill Green was installed and a roof on the church was replaced and pews were padded. In 1986, Reverend Tim Heine was supported as a missionary to Ghana. The congregation also supported Christ the King Lutheran Church in Chicago with exchange visits, support of Living Christ Mission Church in Otterbein, Indiana, and a video ministry to shut-ins. 1990, uh, Pastor Ray Harms was installed, re-carpeted the sanctuary, began broadcasting services on WGFA, elevator installed, sent the youth to San Antonio for a convention, began limited support of Christ Lutheran High School in Buckley. Processional cross was purchased with a memorial gift, and that was in 1996. In 1997, smaller Sunday school room was painted and redecorated. In the year 2000, Pastor Don Stuckwish was installed, cabinet doors and counters were replaced in the kitchen, memorials covered a new furnace and air conditioning system in the church. 2002, transferred to the Central <laughs> Illinois District. 2003, sponsored Reverend Whit as a missionary to Panama. 2004, Pastor Wagner was installed and extensive improvements were made to the parsonage. Purchased a new sound system. In 2005, Care and Fellowship Group established to help members with a variety of needs. In 2006, voted to become a corporate member of Prairie View Lutheran Home and remodeled the room adjacent to the pastor's study as a sacristy for preparation of communion and storage of banners. The next part is from um, 2011 to 2020, which would be you, Kirby, thank you very much. I've got that mixed up, so that's not your problem. That's my problem, so. 2010 and to 2020, let's put it that way. Pastor Carl Gibbs is installed. The lot to the east of the driveway is purchased. The van is purchased for transporting children to St. Paul's School. A large storage building is erected as a garage and storage area for the van. Pastor Fritchie, supported by the Congregation for the Mission of the Dominican Republic. Two seminarians supported each year with mission funds. The Schomburg House to the west of the church is purchased for a new parsonage, $165,000, and it was paid for in one year. Former parsonage is transformed into an annex, including the pastor's office, the secretary's office, the meeting areas, and the storage. Extensive remodeling in the church building of the main stairway to the basement, bathrooms, and new carpeting for the North Exon Sanctuary. Comfort dog, Mala, joins the congregation. A new organ and grand piano were purchased with funds from the Schomburg Trust. 2020, we have 2021, Pastor Minton installed. Youth are involved in yearly conventions of higher things, and we have new wooden mailboxes in the Arctic. <laughs> 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 <laughs>